Last year at an internship with KYW News Radio, I was waiting in a room at the station off of Market Street. Waiting, I was just listening to my iPod and looking out of a window. I saw a silver Mercedes rush up the parking garage across the street. It was odd, but I didn't really think much of it until about 30 seconds later when I watched a figure fall to the ground. I'm not quite sure why I rushed out to check on him. I mean, maybe he was okay, I guess, but he wasn't. All that I saw was brain. Human, fleshy gray matter spewed onto the asphalt in a cocktail of blood. And before the police arrived, I touched his wrist to see I if he Mr. had a pulse left. I need Mr. Topper to report to room 165, Mr. Topper to room 165. As a witness, the police and I spoke and, I and he let me know that he was Ms. a 46-year-old lawyer who Gordienko had just received the worst report to room 267, Gordienko to Although this may seem uncommon, it happens more than I think we realize. This past June 15th, Thomas Bell lit himself on fire and out in front of the Keene, New Hampshire County Courthouse. In a 15-page suicide note, the 58-year-old man expressed anger at the U.S. court system after a 10-year divorce settlement was reached and he lost custody of his children. A study recorded in the Journal of the American, Ac in the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry selected 752 families at random with similar ages, values, family income, and race to find out about adolescent suicide. Over half the kids who lived in divorced families had attempted to commit suicide, while less than a third of all of the people who tried to commit suicide were kids and families that were currently together. This shows that the psychological stability of those, especially kids involved with divorce, is thrown off. This can lead to both physical and emotional problems in the future. According to Women Today magazine, over 60% of couples seeking divorce have a child living at home, while even more have couple, while even more of the couples have children either on the way, working, or at college. A study by divorce, a study by divorcereform.org, shows that the kids who have divorced parents have lower test scores and a higher dropout rate. And another study by the Allen Group shows that an overwhelming majority of adults charged with homicide had divorced and separated parents. For the sanity and future of the kids, as well as the well-being of the adults, the laws about divorce must be changed. My partner Sean and I do not have a problem with the divorce of, you know, of an abusive couple for in a wedding, regi a wedding registry. Dr. E. Mavis Hetherington, a professor of psychology at the University of Virginia, states that kids in an abusive household, grades, and psychological well-being get better after a divorce. However, in the same book, after conducting a study on more than 1,400 families and 2,500 children over the course of three decades, about 80% of the kids and 65% of the adults directly involved with the divorce were psychologically unstable. This piggybacks another study, which was the basis of the book, The Unexpected Legacy of Divorce, a 25-year landmark study conducted by Judith S. Wallerstein, who founded the Center for Family and Transition, and Dr. Julia M. Lewis, who is a psychology professor at San, uh, at San Francisco State University. In the book, they followed the lives of 100 kids for 25 years, who were in a divorced household as children. I quote a passage from the book when I say that the children of divorce have a very hard time growing up. They never recover from their parents' breakups and have difficulty forming their own adult relationships. Many of these children try their best to avoid conflict and fear commitment. Again, Sean and I stress the importance of the divorce of abusive and threatening couples. However, we also believe that divorce is far too easy to attain. Coach Ortiz told my history class a story of two couples in Atlanta in which a husband from one and a wife from another fell in love with each other while having an affair. These two behind their spouse's backs went to Las Vegas, were able to obtain a divorce from their true partner and marry each other. If you have any questions, feel free to ask Mr. Dan Ortiz in room 157. <laughs> the point of this nonfiction story is not to show that this couple should have been together because clearly they shouldn't have been. But rather, it's to show that divorce is far too easy to obtain. This is why my partner Sean and I wish to implement the resolution that the U.S. federal government should enforce prerequisites in order for divorce to be finalized. For the safety of the people involved in the over one million divorces each year in the United States, something has to change. Sean and my plan as the affirmative will keep couples from divorcing for such small reasons while still allowing for the nece necessary divorces to happen. The sanctity of marriage is being tarnished by the simple divorces available in this country, and it is putting a ton of people in danger. Vote affirmative. Thank you.